actually have done a lot of uh, pilot projects in the past when group and concurrent therapy was allowed. That's the biggest single change is the fact that group, and, and it's going from um, a therapy-based model to a patient-centered model. Both, both good things. Group and concurrent, we've seen over time um, that when you provide group and concurrent therapy, we typically tend to get better rehabilitation results from our residents. Um, their gains are more significant because it would be, it's like you watch these commercials that are on nowadays. You've got um, the, the basketball player from Miami, Wade. Wade. He's on a, a treadmill next right. to a lady right. next to him and they're, and they're running and, and, and it's like it's competition. Right. It's no different when you're 95. Right. I mean, it might be a little slower, but it's you know, but it's still a competition, and and people drive to, to you know, help each other out, and it really creates a level of, uh, you know, good neighbor syndrome, and and it's it, it has a lot of very good benefits to it. So, um, but that's that's where we're at right now, and I I, I really hope that um, that we we take full advantage of the group and concurrent therapy that we that we, our results remain positive and our focus on quality needs to stay the same as it has been and, you know, avoid any poor trends.